And I'd like to thank uh, a lot because this this topic I am researching is not easy. Whenever you begin to talk in a with in, in a way that seems to be a little bit critical about the digital divide, people look at you like uh, you went crazy. What are you talking about? How can you be criticizing the thing of the digital divide? So I believe that um, the very important part of I want to put here is that we have to work in the myth and try to look for what is going beyond that myth. Uh, and I would I'd like to, to rescue where this began for me. And I was an addict to this whole new era of computers. I was astonished, what can you do? All the new gadgets that you can see. So I really was in 1995 expecting that the world would change in a way for positive that would be like heaven, but 10, 20 years from that, we see that that's not had happened. So my first research about this topic was uh, I took six, 600 of my students in uh, university, in Columbia University, associated with middle high class. So they didn't have any kind of problem to access computers. So I asked them, well, what do you do with your computer? I play. Uh, anything else? You do anything productive? When I say productive, I thought uh, maybe you make an applet f to solve a very nasty problem. Maybe you save the world. What else do you do? I connect with social networks. Do you know about the policies in the country about the digital nation? I don't know. Does your family support you in your quest in, in digital uh, media? No, they think it's a loss of time. But you have access, you have knowledge, you have all, and you are not changing the world. Why? I, I, I don't know. So my, I began to think that my idea of what is a productive use could be wrong. And I was a very, uh, 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 an adept of that economical and administrative school of Michael Porter. I have changed for my sake. but. Uh, I really thought that we should be productive. Now we think very differently. So I began to read a lot about Bourdieu, Foucault, Barth. I'm not going to bother you with all that. But the important part is Barth talking about myths and the way in which they begin to naturalize a reality in society. Myth created by language, created by an order that has an ideology in that I can I cannot uh, share with my colleague from Peru that we never judge, we cannot judge, we always are judging when we begin to talk. So, and then McLuhan, when we said that we are in this global village, but there's a war. And that war is where one tribe, or oh, few tribes are trying to change the other one. So my idea was, okay, how can I look at this and how can I search and try to test with facts, with data, that that is happening. I didn't want to get more into discussion than to my opinion. I want to have that. So I got uh, to this uh, information science PhD, and I found that uh, there's a kind of methodology called domain analysis that could include or should include a historical analysis, bibliometrics, and content analysis. So that's why I'm saying, uh, what, that's what I'm doing with the keyword digital divide. The first part, the, the historical anal analysis I'm going to summarize, uh, which was what was the participation of Latin America in this explosion of the digital? The first one is the digital is not new. The machines using information comes from 100 years uh, BC. So, but the thing is that in Latin America, we didn't have any participation. That's not new. That's a... That's, uh, that's very well uh, known. But the thing is that the develop, developed world has more than 600 to 500 years living with those, those machines. It's more than a machine, it's an epistemology, it's a way of living, a way of watching reality. And it's part of the industrialist and capitalist society. So the digital has in itself that kind of view. You cannot eliminate it from the package. The only case in Latin America where we have some small chance of getting into this was Robert de Moura, Roberto Lindo de Moura in 1903, 
He invented the triad before the triad was invented by a North American. When he presented that to the, to the Brazilian society, people laughed at him. What's that for? There's no use of that. So he just went to the United States and joined the United States into, develop, into developing a digital society. So I want to show you that it's not that only few tribes are trying to put their own view into other tribes, but these other tribes that we, the Latin Americans, we do not think that is important. We don't think that information and sharing information is important. So, um, why I am doing this with Scholar Google, or Google Scholar? Because I believe that is a tool that, because it's free, because it's why, uh, why they along uh, the planet, it's uh, a way of sending this message, sending this information flux about what is digital divide, what we can do to all the world. Scopus and uh, the Web of Science are not. They are a very elitist uh, way of information, media of information. Now, my first findings seem to be quite uh, expected. The first one is 82% of all what's written in in digital divide is in English. In Spanish, it's on, only 11%. Portuguese, 4%. Surprisingly, in French, only 3%. From that, I divided the specific literature, that which has the keyword into the title, and the general literature, that who has that keyword in any part. The specific is only 3 to 7%. That means that in English, we only have 6,000 articles specific for the digital divide. Uh, the interest on this began in 1997, and it reached the clim its climax in 2003. The thing is that from 2003, 2005, until now, it has gone down 80%. That means today, this what we're talking here is not anymore in fashion, not anymore an interesting thing. Uh, well. Looking to this topic, uh, I choose to, f to, to look at, that, at it in four levels. What are the authors doing? What are the publication media doing? What are their collaboration, the net famous networks doing? And what is the content talking about? And what I found was, in summary, first you got, typical of, of any kind of uh, bibliometric distribution, a high concentration, that for me, Oh my God. High concentration in few authors. But the, the level of the author does not talk a lot about what is happening. It's the level of the country that talks a lot about it. If you look about the concentration of production, you will see that 74% of all what is produced is in the United States. UK comes second with something like 20%. And the most important, when you look about the publishers, 60% of the publishers are private, and they do, do not let uh, free access to the publications. So this has come part of the model of business of publication. S should not be, but is that's a reality. And when you look about uh, collaboration, you see that the United States is the big node that is collaborating with everyone, but in a very fragile way. You see with Italy, like six, six collaborations, which is the most. The, the average is two, three. So we really don't have collaboration. Most important, when you see who is writing about who and what, each country is, is writing about itself. And in that, taking into account that the states, it's almost 80% of the production, means that all that we read is about the United States and it is about communities into the United States. But we are trying to generalize it to the whole world. Uh, so, if you would divide this if, uh, into is the developed world talking about the digital divide and the undeveloped world talking about the digital divide, the 90% of all what has been done is about the developed world, not the world in developing ways. So, my conclusions into this is that first, we are facing here uh, a topic where everyone is talking about himself and looking about his own, its own problems, their own problems. We are not talking about 
something that has a worldwide view. It seems to be logical. I am interested more in my own problems, but the big deal here is, he, the, he, deal here is that the big producer and consumer is the country and the territory that dominates the industry worldwide. So we are absorbing a discursive that is about their own problems and their own ways. And we still think this is a global situation and a global item. It is not. So what I expect to do for the future, this was an, an, uh, an approach to the English literature. I'm going to make it with Spanish and Portuguese. What I foresee is that I will see that in quoting, n the English group does not quote the Spanish, neither the opposite, mainly because of what my colleague said, this difficulty we have with language. And second, because it seems that the interest of the digital divide in developed countries is about their own digital problems. And since in this moment they have overcome them. Uh, last thing I'd like to, to, to leave to you is that the most cited topic in this problem is about politics. It's political science. It's uh, Pippa Norris. And it's very strange because she has only uh, write, uh, written two or three words. So why is this so popular? Why politics become the, the topic of the digital divide? I have one sus suspect, which is this change when Obama came to power, which showed that including people would be very useful in the political arena. And maybe we are looking more to the interest of collecting voters than the interest of making people be empowered about what they want to do. Many thanks.